There are really obsessed people who take all these pictures <laughs> of their food and then, you know, playing with it Gotta get the perfect to have ramp. it look right. Hashtag Thrillist made me do it. <laughs> Rice is nice. It's the world's most common food staple, and while this glorified grass seed is foundational to hundreds of cuisines in all four hemispheres, the ingredient by itself is rarely a celebrity on the plate, which is why we came to a place where it is, the Star of the North, Minnesota. Now, the land of 10,000 lakes is also the unofficial American capital of wild rice, a naturally occurring aquatic grass that's knocked finished and sold by Native Americans in canoes whose ancestors have been doing more or less the same thing for generations. Now, traditionally, families from Bemidji to Albert Lee have come together over bowls of home-cooked wild rice soup, and they definitely still do. But more recently, it's also become a go-to hyper-local ingredient for Minnesota chefs, brewers, and artisans that are adding dimension to the state's hot dish and Juicy Lucy food pedigree. And while legit Minnesota wild rice is expensive, its role as an edible through line that connects Minnesota's pristine past to its modern culinary future just can't be overstated. Which, if you think about it, it's pretty wild. This has been a way of life for our people for years, um, hundreds of years. From Minneapolis, we drove north, way north to meet up with members of the White Earth Ojibwe tribe who consider wild rice sacred. On the reservation, only tribe members are allowed to harvest it, and always by hand. My name is uh, Sila Wadena, uh, better known as Sunny Wadena. We're on Lower Rice Lake area in Rice Lake, Minnesota, located on the White Earth Indian Reservation. Our people come from the east, migrated from there, so when our people decided to come this way, it was because they were told, you'll know when to stop traveling west when you get to where the food grows on the water. Wild race, we call it Monoma. It was a gift to our people, and that's the way we see it. The knocker, so he's pulling the race into the boat. He's trying to respect the race. And you don't want to break the stalks. You don't want to break the stalks. You don't want to knock the heads off. So I'm pulling the rice in, and I'm just hitting it in. Just scraping it off a little bit, getting it in the canoe. His res main responsibility is keeping me busy in the rice. And then he's looking for the rice while I'm here. And I got to watch how he's knocking, because if the rice ain't over the boat, then there's no point in hitting it. So I got to make sure the boat's under the rice. That's one of his responsibilities for uh, being a polar. We gotta have clean rice when we sell it, no reeds in there. We try to leave all the rice worms we can, I guess it helps it somehow. No, I don't know. <laughs> That's flavor. Flavor. This is kind of tough, tough. A lot of guys don't do it. We're losing more ricers each year, but we're trying to get the younger generation going in. That's a tough one. We have the gaming systems, the smartphones, and here on White Earth Reservation, we have a big drug epidemic. Yeah, there are a lot of things that are sort of working to draw the youngest generation away from traditions like this. If we incorporate it in our younger generation, then they can keep it going. We figure we're not gonna be out here forever. <laughs> We've been lucky that you know, that we do have bumper years these last few years here. There was a time where we had an abundance of finished wild rice sitting on shelves. And now that we can market it and bring in revenue, um, we can't keep it on a shelf. Yeah. You know? The experience of waking up early in the morning in that part of Minnesota, taking a canoe, through the, through the water, knocking the wild rice into the boat. It's such a beautiful thing. Our journey continued to the Minneapolis kitchen of a Minnesota superfan who knows a thing or two about local ingredients. You might recognize him. How are you? I'm great, how are you? Thanks for having me, what do we got going on today? Oh my gosh, uh, well, fried rice. Andrew Zimmern is a culinary explorer for the Travel Channel. It's literally his job to travel the world eating its delicacies. 
and for the last three decades, he's called the Twin Cities home. I'm endlessly pimping everything that's Minnesota. I think we have so much undiscovered uh, stuff going on. The, the wild rice is one of the most important elements in First Peoples culture here in Minnesota. This is something that grows naturally, um, that has sustained peoples for thousands of years. Yeah. You know, let's see what else that we can do with it. This is my sachet. I've got some ginger and garlic and scallion in there. And when we cook our wild rice, I'm going to add that to the pot along with some rice wine and a little bit of soy so we get some of that flavor in the rice itself as well. And we'll throw in our hot chilies. Those are hot dried Sichuan chilies. I like putting that ginger right into the bottom there. A little bit of pork for this because we're making a roast pork fried rice. My cooking wild rice it, through a Chinese prism is just as valid as um, a white earth band of Ojibwe chef cooking this dish, mm -hmm. just as valid as a Chinese chef cooking this dish. I think we need to shine bright lights on this and illuminate it because it's fantastic and wonderful. And I think the more people that are making this, the better. Yeah. But cooking is hardly the only thing you can do with wild rice. Minneapolis's booming craft beer scene has created a different demand for the ingredient, a drinkable one. I'm Derek Taylor with Lakes and Legends Brewing Company. Andrew Dimery, uh, head brewer. We felt we had an opportunity to brew a lot of different beers using local ingredients. We start with those ingredients and build the beers around those, and wild rice was on the top of the list farmer can coach Andrew how to treat that wild mm -hmm. rice to make sure the flavors come out. So it's more of a relationship and that's Absolutely. something that I feel like oh, yeah. you guys benefit not just from a high quality product but you feel like you're also getting the insights that you otherwise just wouldn't have access exactly. to. Exactly. Oh, yeah. definitely. You get to know the farmers, you kind of feel the heartaches that they feel if they have a bad yield or, or a bad season um, but you, you share in the, the good years as well with them but you really get to know them on a personal level. You've seen their like face light up when they have the beer yeah. and it's like yeah, it's almost like two become one in that. Like, you know, I, I just made the beer, but they grew the ingredient. There must be a sense of responsibility that you feel working with an ingredient. You know, oh, to yeah, certain people yeah. in the state, it's a sacred ingredient. It, it's almost like you definitely respect the ingredients more. The farmers went through all the work of growing it, and then me, I'm just trying to preserve it for a little bit longer, yeah. you know? As it finishes, definitely nuttiness, definitely earthiness, and then like, a little bit of citrus. I would definitely consider it a food beer. That's Joe, editor-in-chief of Growler Magazine, which chronicles food and drink culture in Minnesota. He showed up to the brewery with a very special Minnesota snack. So where's this from? A galactic pizza in Minneapolis. Oh, what's got this got it. on it? Home, Minnesota bison, Minnesota mozz, homemade red sauce, morel mushrooms, and of course, wild rice. I've never had rice, any kind of rice on a pizza, much less wild rice, with Minnesota So the next thing is like toasted wild rice. Yeah, right? man. It's amazing. I love it. It's like a hearty slice of pizza. When craft beer uh, went went bananas here, everybody wanted IPAs and everybody wanted the standards and they wanted to measure breweries by those kind of standards, yeah. right? Since then, uh, we've had a lot of people uh, start to focus more on, on individual styles and niches and, and things like that in the community. So as this into the brewing industry and the broader culinary scene in Minnesota expands, there's gonna be a demand for higher velocity access to ingredients and higher volume of ingredients. Wild rice is diametrically opposed to what that is. Our growing season is, you know, relatively minute right. and, uh, and we're trying to do a lot with that. And breweries and chefs and people in the food and beverage community all wanna celebrate that. And to be able to continue to celebrate that, we need more producers and more farmers and more wild ricers and more people like that that are willing to go out on a limb so that we can continue to, you know, keep these traditions alive and celebrate these foods the way that they deserve to be celebrated. This is fried wild rice. Oh wow, the nuttiness really comes through. The wild rice really stands up in a way that like a, tip, you know, a typical rice might not. And I think that nutty flavor with pork, when you start talking about what else can you do with wild rice? Let's preserve it. 
let's honor it. Let's expand the opportunities for the people there so that they can make a living off it. It's so unique and it's something that is so beautiful and such a part of our state heritage and, and it is magical. The food that grows on water. If there really is any magic to this versatile grass seed, it's the ability to keep bringing Minnesotans back to the table for generations, longing for one more taste of the wild rice of the North. Hey, what's up? Did you enjoy this episode of Food Groups here in Minnesota? We certainly hope so. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel right here. Watch this video right here. And of course, like and comment below. We'll see you guys next Monday.